Our next guest says there's growth potential, even if there is a recession. So let's bring in Advisors Capital Management, Joanne Feeney, with her top picks in the space. Joanne, great to have you on the show. Why do you think that? Why do you think there's growth potential regardless of what the economy does? Uh, yeah, good morning. Well, it's because that the broader economy is being constrained by, you know, fears about whether the consumer is going to suffer if there's a rise in unemployment as the Fed continues its inflation fight. These tech companies, particularly the ones that took off in the first half, the Super 7, right, as we're calling them from, you know, the Microsofts down to Meta, really have taken off on longer term drivers beyond any kind of recession dynamics. And the reason for that is because we have this new generative AI that's creating lots of possibilities for new apps, but also because we need the new infrastructure, whether it's data centers or the chips that power them, to enable all of these new apps. And that's real. That's tangible. That's growth that's going to happen for many years. And investors are recognizing that, that they can own these companies that are going to see pretty significant sales and earnings growth, not for one or two years, but for five and ten and more years. So given the fact that we've seen such big moves in some of the biggest names tied to or associated with AI already to start the year, what do you like here? And I ask that, uh, seeing that your top three holdings are Broadcom, Apple, and Microsoft. Yeah, no, obviously you want to own the ones that are going to power this, this probably AI revolution, right? You want to own the picks and shovels. Uh, and, and those three companies are in that space. And we think those are going to be solid long-term holdings. Obviously, we're not going to see the same sort of appreciation of, say, NVIDIA that we've seen in the first half of the year. Uh, but it has such growth potential in front of it. We think you want to continue to own that at a reasonable level, you know, roughly in line with the market. But beyond that, you can look for the companies that are likely to put this to use, whether it's in tech, uh, the applications uh, for the AI, or it's in industrials, you know, whether it's a Honeywell. Uh, using smart technology or in technology, whether it's a service now, which we really like for clients. So you have to look now to the applications in addition to the picks and shovels. Joanne, the idea that the market is essentially seizing on these very long term growth opportunities in the secular winners in tech uh, can certainly be true. But the valuation and the price you pay uh, can be suboptimal. Didn't we just learn that when the uh, Nasdaq 100 went down 40 percent? in less than a year from the peak. At the peak, people were saying, oh, these are immune from the economy and, and rates, and they can basically just be uh, about long-term secular growth stories. Yeah, and so what, what uh, leveled into that story, right, was the massive increase in interest rates that happened very quickly. And so to your point, right, those stock prices came down pretty dramatically. Plus, you had a, an increase, a spike in geopolitical risk with the war in Ukraine. And then you had the recession risk piled on top of that. So it was a trifecta of negative drivers for high valuations, high growth stocks. We've now come to at least the end or very close to the end of the rate increases, right? Clearly, we're going to see far fewer rate increases ahead of us than there were behind us. So what had been a significant headwind to growth stocks and their valuations now becomes neutral and becomes a tailwind probably as we get into 2024. And that's what I think supports the valuations going forward. Now the valuations are driven more by the earnings growth story and less by the level of the valuations that is influenced by those interest rates. That comes out of the story, eventually becomes a tailwind.